All right. I am here today with Steve, the Dean of the Man Mindset. Steve, how you doing today? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me on, T-Dog. Appreciate you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're here. Um, first of all, let's talk about, I guess, how you got into the dating and the dating coaching game. Well, I got into it when I was nine. Um, I I was uh, I was doing OK with women. I was kissing girls. I get caught with girls. Um, I talk enough to girls to get over the house. And when they start a button in my shirt, I get scared and I run home, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, I was I was doing all this like we're talking like late 70s and everything. So uh, what happened was I met a mentor that showed me a, a, a process of thinking to be able to think for myself, to be able to answer and solve situations on my own without the help of anybody else. Because uh, he showed me that as a man, I'm authentic. You know, we're all authentic. You know, the fingerprint, I always talk about the fingerprint in your name. And he showed me the value of my name. So I, I, I've been doing this well from nine, but professionally for 30 years. I, I, you know, in high school, guys would give me a little bit of money here and there to help him out. But in the 90s, that's when I really jumped into this. Uh, then I like started doing the podcast. Uh, then from podcasts, I got on with Max McLean. And then I rolled into MP3s and on and on until where we're at right now. So I've been doing this for 30 years, man. And then when did you start your actual podcast? Obviously, YouTube hasn't been around forever. Actually, how did you do it before YouTube? It was uh, it was called MP3s. It, it was it, okay. first it was it was like you you re record files and then they then they came up with podcasts and like with lips and where you could upload your files and stuff. See, it was podcasts became before the YouTubes and all the other stuff. So then I went to blog talk radio, which I'm still on right now. And then it rolled into, you know, uh, MySpace came in there um aol dot well I, I'm, I'm an age of myself but it started off online with aol.com and mm -hmm. yahoo chat they used to have chat rooms where guys and women would chat and guys would talk to me because i was spitting all the fire in the chat room they were wondering what i was doing so i was kind of doing it like when around 96 97 online and everything okay now okay you have a lot of guys that are, that draw to you and what is the appeal? What's the appeal and that draws men to you? Well, the appeal is, is that I teach guys not what to think. I don't, I don't teach guys to, to, to mimic me. I don't teach guys to mm -hmm. use terminologies and phrases. What I teach guys is, is that they need to learn their name and their authenticity, like I said before. And what I teach guys is the game is not about women. I always tell them that the game women are a perk in the game. You know, there's there's not women have nothing to do with you as a man. But as a man, you've got to learn knowledge of self, knowledge of women, knowledge of dating and knowledge of sex, because all these things connect and they work together. But the, the problem is, T, is that a lot of young men still carry over high school thinking into the real world as in the fears, the, uh, the lack of confidence, and they carry that over where women begin to evolve sexually. You know, they, they test their sexual range of things. So uh, I think where I, where I separate myself is I, I work on authenticity. I, I teach guys to write poetry, to work on their mouthpieces. Uh, I teach guys how to cook. I teach guys every little piece of a lifestyle, not just approaching women, texting, mm -hmm. talking, sex, kissing, making out, everything under the sun, man. But there's no specific template. Like I've seen some where it's like, say exactly this to a woman, like go ahead and read my book and do this. Say these no, exact but. words. The, the only time I say, say these exact words is approaching a woman because I got a free approach boot camp because approaching a woman has nothing to do with the game. So I don't necessarily tell people do this. I ask them, what do you think you should do? Because I, what I'm trying to get these guys to see is that they have their own language. Like, Tony, you have your own language. Like, like we've, I, we've known each other for a few years. Mm -hmm. And I, I, know, I, I know you're a ladies' man. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But I, I, you know, okay. I, know, I, you're right. I know you're a ladies' okay. man. But we've never met each other. But we still connect on the same level because 
your thinking is yours and yours alone. And my thinking is mine. And when we come together, we're two um, independent thinkers coming together like we are right now. So you, like the, the, the Tony Bruno or like your brother George, same way, you know, it's white chocolate. The same mm -hmm. thing has their own. He has his own language, his own thinking that's only conducive to him and nobody else. And that's what I'm trying to get young men to see. Stop mimicking. Stop parroting. Stop using words and phrases from somebody else and learn yourself, because if you're following somebody else's son, what happens when that son goes away? Mm -hmm. Now, do you think it's gotten I guess the word I guess I want to use. Has it gotten worse for men since yes. you started? It is, yes, it's gotten worse because if you think about it, Tony, two decades ago, and a lot of men, a lot of young boys don't understand this. Two decades ago, they were doing this with PUAs. They were going to boot camps teaching uh, deception, lies, manipulation, and things like that. Two decades ago, to uh, the, the the young men that were in the early two thousands. And what's happening now is is that there is this huge push, and and this is going to be crazy, Tony. Follow me on this. It's starting to get to a point where women aren't the enemy. It's men that are teaching guys the wrong information about women. You see, a lot of people out there are talking. Uh, okay, Tony, you remember Scared Straight. You remember back yeah, in the day? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so we and if and if anybody doesn't know the premise of Scared Straight, it is a bunch of bad kids that go to prison where they get scared to run and do a certain have a certain lifestyle. Right, Tony? Mm -hmm. okay, okay. So what's happening now is that people are using their lives to manipulate these young boys into thinking that it's going to happen to them. They're saying like it's for instance, like, um, well, I'm gonna give you an example. Well, Tony, I was in a bad relationship and I didn't get married. I had a bad relationship, a bad marriage, and she did me wrong. See, this is why you shouldn't get married. This is why you shouldn't date women. And this is why you shouldn't do that. When that person saying that hasn't married every woman in the world, he hasn't dated every woman in the world. And it is a, it's a it's our responsibility not to teach these young boys their line of thinking, because if I'm teaching you how to think like me, you're losing yourself. Do you see what I'm saying, my brother? Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, I get it. I get it. And what it sounds to me, too, is like what you just said about also, I think, is people aren't owning up to their own responsibilities Yes, and, yes. and, and the mistakes that they made. Because yes. I do notice there's a, there's a faction of the manosphere that will blame women for everything. And right. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, when I first entered the manosphere and then again, I've only had really, I'll say a couple, I call them bad relationships that affected me in yes. my life. Yes. But I, but at first the, first thing I did was blame the blame the woman. And what I actually had to do was own up to what I did. Whatever I allowed was what I accepted. Well, and, and see, Tony, that's the crazy thing. The game isn't about women. So how can you complain about something that has nothing to do with manhood? That, that, yeah. That's how simple it is. And but unfortunately, it, it's it's this push where we want to say that we're going to blame women like Tony. If I gave you, it's like I gave you, I give you a TV remote and control, Tony, and you choose what buttons you press. The, the remote control doesn't control you, nor does the TV control you. You control what you watch. You control what channels. You control when to turn the TV on and when to control the TV off. But what's going on right now is that a lot of young men out there in the YouTube world, they're saying that it's the TV's fault why you can't watch TV. It's the remote control's fault why you can't do that. And we also have another problem where we have a lot of young men giving a lot of bad information when their nuts haven't dropped from their stomach yet. I mean, you got young guys trying to teach life lessons when they haven't even matured enough to even understand life lessons. So it's it's coming from everywhere, man. Mm -hmm. Now, when when you talk when you talk to guys, OK, yes. and you talk to, say, a student or something like that. Yes. Do you do you adjust your and I guess adjust your your coaching according to their age? 
No, I, I don't adjust coaching to age because I, I, I adjust to the thinking. It, it doesn't matter how old they are. The problem is how they see the world. Well, not even how they see the world, Tony. It's how they see themselves in the world. That's the problem. So what we have to do is I, I teach them to learn themselves, to learn what makes them them. And, and the biggest thing I teach them is they have to uh, detach from the pod or the group. As a man, Tony, you are, you are on your own road as a man. I'm on my own road as a man. And I'm not talking about purpose, that, that, that's responsibility. And I'm not talking about all those jargon names. I'm saying that the road that you're walking is one that you have to walk by yourself. And you can't walk that road with another man. It is yours and yours alone. So that's what I show them. They've got to learn how to be alone and walk that road. Now, in, in this manosphere, we see so much emphasis on female nature. Okay? <laughs> There's no such thing. <laughs> okay. So that's, I want your take on female nature. No such thing. There's no such thing as female nature. No such thing as hypergamy. There's no, and I'm going to tell you why. Because a female doesn't define me. Mm-hmm. So her, what does her nature have to do with me? Mm-hmm. She is living in my world. I am bringing my world to her. Uh, so what, what does her, okay. If I'm looking at female nature, I need, I might as well worry about the snakes outside of my lawn. I might as well worry about the sharks out mm-hmm. in the beach and things like that. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. We're so busy looking outside of ourselves of what women do versus who we are. Because as a man, I train women on what I expect them to be for me. So if I take ownership and responsibility of myself and I train women the way I want them to be, and they have a right to say yes or no, Tony, how can I worry about her nature? Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to correct behaviors. She See, a lot mm-hmm. of men, Tony, think women should come out of the box perfect. It's not true. They're not coming out of the box perfect. But one thing they will do is when they get around a man, they're going to follow his lead because they know a man will walk away. That's why, remember, Tony, and you know what I'm talking about. There was no such thing as female nature. There was no such thing as hypergamy in the last few years. There was no such thing as all these purple, yeah. all, all these key words are what we call catchphrases. Because if that was the case, Tony, you wouldn't get the women that you get now. Or how, you know, I'm going to put you on and blow your spot mm-hmm. up. But, Tony, you wouldn't no, be you. Right. Jo- George, George, your brother wouldn't be him. And I wouldn't be me. If we allowed women to dictate how we move in this world, sir. Okay. So, um, so we got, we got with female nature. So yes, basic, what, what, what are you teaching guys to, how do I put this to attract women to them? Okay, what I'm teaching guys is uh, there's a, several things. One thing I always tell guys, I don't teach guys how to have sex. That's, that's mm-hmm. below me. I teach guys to build themselves and their name in a way to attract women on an emotional level. See, women make emotional investments, and that's what a lot of guys don't understand. Look, I don't mind, if you want to get your body right, get your body right. If you want nice clothes, get nice clothes, and nice cars and nice shoes, but don't do it for a woman. So what I mm-hmm. teach guys Again, knowledge yourself, knowing who you are, establishing laws, rules, codes, mission statements, legacy statements, and vision statements on not only how you see the world, but how you see relationships and how you see women. Knowledge of uh, dating. Understand that dating isn't about feeding her and buying her drinks and bending over backwards. It's about being honest with women and telling them the truth. Uh, knowledge of sex, what a lot of guys don't do is they don't look to their sexuality. They don't know the difference between smooth, seductive, romantic, kinky, dirty, freaky, nasty. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that sexuality is not just how you are. Yes, it's how you dress. It's how your house is established. It's one thing called flow. So personality traits, self-awareness, how you communicate, how you delegate, adaptability, and a way you can affect change in yourself to affect change in women, sir. Okay. Well, you know, there is one word that you just, that you just said. Yes. And I know this word in definitely parts of the manosphere is absolutely 
just probably decimated when it's mentioned, and that's romance. Yes. They're, okay. Uh, like I told you before, Tony, unfortunately for a lot of young men, they carry over the high school thinking. They carry over the thinking that they had, the, the immaturity that they had in high school, and they bring that into the real world. And see, women, they when they go into the real world, they look at their sexuality. They embrace their sexuality. They, they learn about their sexuality, their kinks and what they like and what they don't like. And I always try to teach guys, because I used to do a little gigoloing. I used to teach guys mm -hmm. that uh, the beautiful thing about sexuality is showing a woman I'm opportunity. I'm not her option. I am the thing that can tap mm -hmm. into her mind. See, most guys, see, women have kitty cat. I'll call it kitty cats. They're always going for the one between their legs, but not the one between their ears because they're too ashamed to learn about their sexuality. They're too ashamed to understand that as you mature, you know how to be romantic when it becomes romantic. You know how to be smooth and seductive. You know how to shift down to be kinky or dirty or nasty. It's a process that's in every man, but they shy away from it because the high school maturity says, oh man, I'm not going to do that's stupid. Why would I do that? Why, why would I want to learn? But if you know, 50 shades of gray, right? The book, you know, it was one of the mm -hmm. best-selling books, but that's yeah. the thing. Why was it the best-selling one of the best-selling books? Because women are fiending for men that not only know sexuality to themselves, but can carry a woman to a threshold of sexuality where she learns more about herself, man. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that movie was in that book was huge. Yes, huge. I mean, women lined up around the block to get yes. in there and see that. Yes. Whether they're a feminist or not is from what I understand. Yes. So it's it's in it's in all women. So let's say you have a an existing guy in a relationship. Yes. Okay, and it's going badly. Yes. Um how do you break that down for a man? Okay, the first thing I need, the first thing I let all men know is that they got to look at relationships totally different. And see, everybody looks at relationship as one thing. You know, you meet the woman and then you just go through straight to moving in and dating. The difference that we do, and I've always done for the last 30 years, is I've broken down relationships. Meeting and dating a woman is different from a relationship. A relationship is different from moving in together. Moving in together is different from engagement. Engagement is different from marriage. So what, it, what I mean is every phase as a man now, because I put it on a man because it's not about women. You have to know what you're going to tolerate. You need to know what you're going to put up with. And you need to know what you want from every relationship. And if that woman is not giving you what you want, you either fall back or let her go. But, uh, when, but when guys have relationship issues, we've got to see the tough thing a lot of men don't want to do is the ego and self-importance won't allow them to realize that when a woman treats them bad, it's not on the woman. A man trains a woman on how she should treat him by the right. respect that he demands from the woman. So if that's the case, we've got to I always go back to the first argument and always ask him. But what did you do? I'm sorry. That's all right. Do you do you teach the opposite though too? Do you teach that um, the and I'm 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 asking you this, but do you teach that the men should respect the women also? No, no. Every okay. Everything is built on respect. See, mm -hmm, I, okay. I I okay, and as for respect, because I, I threw Tony, I threw uh, George off on this one. I remember when I was interviewing. Him. See, I teach guys how to fall into respect and not love. Mm -hmm. Fall into respect first. Don't fall in love. Gotcha. That means that your standard and who you are as a man has to be the compass of the relationship. That means you have to lead her. And a man that has no sense of self, no self-value, no self-worth, and he doesn't believe in himself, the woman is going to be the compass. And that's where the problem is because there's no balance at that point. And women don't know how to be men. So they try to be men. And that's where the, the, the two people always butt heads, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, it sounds like your philosophy is it's all about the man. It's about yes, respect. always. And yes. the men, the man is the leader. 
is the leader. Always. And but that's what so what you're telling me is women are looking for that leader. They are craving it, it goes back to nature. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. It goes back to nature as well. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They want to be led. They don't want somebody that walks on eggshells. They don't want somebody who's not sure of himself. You, Before you even get with a woman, you have to know that I can walk away and say no to any woman I meet. I will never put a woman above mm -hmm. myself. She can walk beside me, but she can never be above me because I am the sun. You know, I am all things. So mm -hmm. I, the, this is what I expect. And... And it's just like a job. See, people are under this impression that if a woman treats me bad, Tony, okay? Okay, let's just take woman. Let's say her name is woman A, okay? And if woman A treats me bad, okay, you're, you're, you're in Florida, I'm in Texas. So a woman A treats me bad in Texas. The way they're spinning it on YouTube is that that same woman is, can go to Florida and treat you the same way. That's not mm -hmm. true. Because mm -hmm. you and I are two, we're two total. I mean, we're. I'm just giving you an analogy, but mm -hmm. I, I, I cannot base women off of what somebody tells me. Because as a man, I have to judge women on how they treat me, not the next man. The next mm -hmm. man is not my problem, and as it doesn't, it sounds mean, but it's true. I can't worry about the next man. I can mm -hmm. only worry about what I know and what I can do, my brother. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you have some catchphrases, and one yes. of your biggest catchphrases, and I like this. And if you, when somebody hears this, it's going to make them think, and it's called grass eating lion. <laughs> yes, yes. So grass tell me about yeah. Tell me about that. <laughs> and what that means? I mean, explain that in some detail. A gr a grass okay a gra a grass eating lion is an individual that wants to play the role of a man. He's an individual that puts the coat of a man on or the hat of a man. He's an individual that has mommy. OK, remember, as men, we cut the umbilical cord, Tony. Mm -hmm. But as these guys do, they take the umbilical cord out of mom and they attach it to a man that gives the same emotional output that mom does. Mom complains. Right. Mom's the victim. Mm -hmm. Mom doesn't take accountability for anything. Right. So what these grassy lions do is they take the umbilical cord out of mom and they look for somebody like mom. And that's where they find certain kind of men that teach the same things as mom. They don't teach these boys. Tony, I don't know how many ways you can complain about women. I, I don't I don't I don't know how many ways you can do it, but they a grassy lion doesn't see the big picture. A grassy lion doesn't look for himself to the answers. He doesn't have vision. He's not clear. He's not concise. He's not impactful. He cannot communicate. He doesn't take risks. What he does is he waits for life to happen. And he's always pointing the finger at everybody else. He's always blaming everybody else who is going on in his life. And he's looking for everybody else to tell him how to maneuver his life. He's waiting for somebody to tell him who to marry, who to date, who not to date. And that means that you're playing the role of lion, but instead of eating meat, you're like, mm, this is the best grass I ever had, Tony. Gotcha. This grass is good. <laughs> gotcha. Now, can you can you attribute this to fatherless society? Oh, absolutely. Remember, remember, Tony, a lot of these boys came from emotions and they never cut the cord. So the the the, the boundaries. The, the, the feelings, the emotions, the, the unaccount, the not taking account, accountability for what they do comes from mom. And I'm not saying mom's a bad person. I'm just saying that because there was no man and Tony, even if there was a man in the household, maybe dad slept on the couch. Maybe dad was saying happy wife, happy life. Maybe mm -hmm. dad was getting beat down by mom. So it, it, there's two different ways. And what happens is they don't teach these young boys that they must maneuver from the house and into life with a whole new thinking. See, they never were told that it's when you get out in that Serengeti, the rules change. And a lot of young boys can't handle that. So what they do, Tony, because of mom and because of no fathers, they try to find a father figure in another guy 
And but what they sometimes they look for is mom in that guy. They mm -hmm. look for someone to say, let's blame women for everything that's wrong in our life. Let's not take accountability for our actions. Let's let's blame the women for everything that's going wrong in our life. And then you've got other people. See, they want the community and not the individual. So they want to feel like they're part of something instead of being a part of their name, brother. OK, another topic. Um, I'm a little older and this is this is really probably a, this is a epidemic in our country is a man yes. that's been married for 30 years. His wife blindsides him and leaves. Right. He hasn't been in the dating world. So I'm sure you can help a guy like that also. Oh, every, I, I have them all. I have them all, Tony. See, what I always tell guys that they have to understand is that, you know what? Life is going to happen. And that's, that's just to be honest with you. As men, life happens. But as life happens, we got to learn and we have to grow every day and we have to create chapters in our lives of who we are. And if you're if things don't work out 30 years later, there's no reason why you can't get back out there, because uh, Tony, isn't a lion a lion in 24 A.D., yeah. 62 B.C., 1970, 70, 68, 1482? The times will change. But a man will always stay the same, Tony. And that's the thing that a lot of young men don't see. They think that when they if they get divorced, that it's scary. No, yes, it's going to be scary, Tony, because you because you've never sharpened your sword. Remember, Tony, as a man, we must always keep our name sharp. Mm -hmm. You almost sharp that sword real tight. And a lot of guys don't do that. But I get them to learn their value and show women that they need to invest in them instead of the other way around, brother. All right. Well, let's let's talk about one topic, and that sure. is social media. Yes. I hear a lot of complaints. Now, if you go on any Instagram, especially Instagram or any of these things, yes, especially um, you will see a woman can put up a picture of her in a bikini or in a thong, yes. and you just look down that, scroll down there, you, and oh, it yes. is just man after man after yes. man after yes. man after man. Yes. So what what has social media done to dating and has it given a, a women a false sense of validation or are they getting all the validation they need from putting a picture on Instagram or Facebook or. Well, they're, they're getting the validation that they want online, but they're, they're they get the what they need from a man. So we're talking we're talking mm -hmm. social media for women, not for guys, but for women. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So, okay. If you look, okay. If you turn on your TV, Tony, it's, it's, it's insecurity commercials. W women are walking insecurities. They're not, and no, I'm okay. I'm not saying women aren't special, but they're not special. There's mm -hmm. nothing special about a woman until a man determines she's special. But what a lot of guys don't understand or women, they're walking insecurities. Every day, Botox, makeup, eyeliner, hair, nails, all these things to what? Enhance or lie to the woman to make her feel like she's something that she's not. The mm -hmm. dress makes her feel good. The shoes make her feel good. The purses make her feel good. But, Tony, like you said, the problem is there's a reinforcement from the grass-eating lions mm -hmm. that think she's special. And they judge her because of her looks and not her character and her personality. But see, where, where a woman like that will sleep with a man like us, Tony, is because I look beyond the body. The body, I, don't, I never make it about sex, Tony, and that's what I always tell guys. Mm -hmm. If you make it about sex, it shows the woman your lack of experience. I make it about my time. I don't want to waste mm -hmm. my time. I, I, that's the last thing. I don't want to waste my time. And a lot of these guys think by kissing her behind, and buying her things and doing all that other stuff that she's going to want them. She's going to use them, but she's not going to want them, Tony. And social media has done a bad job for both sides, man. Well, let's stay on this topic of social media and yes. social media in, inside that, mm. that group is also dating websites. Yes. Now, especially in this quarantine and this lockdown, it's not, not so bad in Florida, but, um, Whenever you look, whether you'd be on Bumble or Tinder, and I've noticed this kind of as a pattern and really since probably the beginning of the year. 
yes. you're going to see at the bottom, you're going to see an Amazon wish list. Yes. You're going to see only, was it only fans? Yes. Only fans. You're going to see Venmo. And I think Venmo is a money, money sending service. Yes. So yeah. that's telling me that when a woman is putting this out there, there are guys actually paying them and buying them things. Tony, here's the problem. Everybody has a role to play in this, this world. Everybody has roles to play, as in everybody can't be a man. Everybody, can't, every, everybody wants to be a man, but they're the hunted and they're the hunters. And what guys have to understand is that's what keeps the economy going. You know, see, the, the world, the, the game is so deep now, Tony, that there are companies out there self-sabotaging young men to put them in situations to give women money to establish. It's, it's like a, it's a connection. You know what I mean? It's a connection on a deeper level. But, but when it comes to this economy and it comes to all the stuff that you're talking about, that's the power women realize they have as soon as they start learning about their sexuality. Mm -hmm. They know what they have. They just cultivate it, redefine it, and start using it to get what they want. And that's where guys like me come in at to tell you guys to evolve yourself. See, Tony, guess what? Every woman that's getting free stuff from these guys are the same women buying stuff from men like us. Mm -hmm. They're the same women that are buying us watches and, and clothes and flying us around and things like that because they see value in us and they invest in emotional value. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the it's the Amazon wish list. I just noticed that recently and I yeah, noticed a going. lot of it. I mean, it's always yes. on there and I'm I, I yes. did have an issue with it. I'm like. I, like I said, are, are men actually paying for this? What what does that get a man? What does that get a man? Well, will it get a man? Uh, thank just you in like a, a hello, <laughs> hello. Thank no, you. No, no, it, it? Mm -mm. no. They had before that. They were something. If you look it up, it's called sex lies and rinsing guys. This was going on a, a long time ago. See, see, Tony. People don't understand where this happened. There was there was something that happened in two thousand seven. That flipped the whole entire game, Tony. 2007 was the change that what we're getting right now. Now, Tony, you've been around. You've seen the PUAs in the 2000s, right? Uh, the boot camps and all that other stuff, right? Now, we can agree that when the PUAs, they had the layers and they were teaching guys how to manipulate and deceive. There were no metals, right? There was no purpose. There was not much complaining. Can we agree on that? There were, it, was, it was just... They were living high off the hog, right? They, they, there were no complaining. Women are bad. They never said anything because they had these secret groups going on. Women didn't know what was happening. But when VH1 dropped the pickup artist, I think it was August 7th, 2007, mm -hmm. that's what changed the whole world because women then realized that, wait a second, this is how deep we got. It wasn't the fact that these guys were trying to manipulate these women into bed. These women realized that these guys were scared of women, lacked confidence. They were not assertive. So the flip happened. It's like the, the PUAs created Frankenstein, right? And now Frankenstein is tearing down the town. Everybody wants to complain about Frankenstein, right? And what happened was mm -hmm. when that flip happened, Tony, women became more aggressive, more assertive, and they started using the, the, the lack of confidence in these guys to get what they want, where they started creating these, these pages where, or even the webcams, where they were getting paid and not giving anything away. And then did you notice, Tony, after 2007, what started to pop up? Women are bad. Women are bad. Oh, it's not fair, right? I mean, you told me you were there. You see yeah. what I'm saying? There was a change, but no one wants to talk about that truth, brother. Now, growing up and me and my brothers, and yes, I just never, I guess really, it really, it really hit me hard is when I first went to 21, actually before 21, but yes, but the issue that men were having a problem meeting women. 
Yeah, I never yeah. really, me and my brother really never understood that whole me. Now I did have a, a few talks with Anthony Johnson in depth about this, yes. about, you know, what the issue is. I, yes. I've never had the issue maybe cause I was, I don't know. I, maybe I had a strong father who was, a, you yes. know, who was a player. Um, <laughs> I don't know, you know, but I, never i've never had an issue very well and always still still can till this day i mean i don't have an issue it right i want the woman that i want to spend company with is the one that i choose to choose to have company with and that's it right well your your father taught you and your brother okay. what a bruno was you, you see what i'm saying tony uh, tony your, your mm -hmm. father showed you what a what is a bruno you know what what is a man? What? How does a Bruno think? How does a Bruno de de behave? How does he think? And as a Bruno, you must think for yourself. And as a Bruno, you must solve the world for yourself. And and that was that's the difference. A lot of these young men are running away from their name. They're running away from what makes them unique. Like for us, you know, we were before the internet. That's why we killing it because mm -hmm. we're before the internet, which means that. We had to put work in ourselves. If we wanted to talk to a woman, we had to what? Get up and go all, all the way over there, mm -hmm. even if she turns us down. So these young mm -hmm. men are going away from their name and they're trying to be somebody else. And that's the problem. See, when you try to be somebody else, that's where you have problems because you're, you're looking for someone else to give you the answers, number one. But when you make it about women, instead of yourself. I know that sounds crazy, but that's where the problem, another problem is because again, the game has nothing to do with women. The, women have no part in my life as a man, nor did women have a part in you learning to be a Bruno and your brother George learning how to be a Bruno. Mm -hmm. Now, do you also talk to men about just, I guess we'll call it a rotation about having, in other words, just having sex only with a woman yes. and communicating that to her only. I teach guys from the get go to always let a woman know where she's at. Never lie to her. Let her know because women are not used to men saying no. Women are not used to men telling them what they really are. And that's why I always tell guys, look, I don't want a relationship with you. You know, I, I'm not looking for a relationship. Matter of fact, the reason why I can't give you a relationship is to be honest with you, I don't know you well enough to give you a relationship. So how can I give you something that you think you want when you and I have, don't even know each other? And that's the truth. I, I'm not making up. I mean, I don't know her, so I can't give her one. But once I determine what it is I want, keyword me, then I have to relay that just like a job has to relay the information from manager to employee. It, it, you have to be able to be real with these women. But the problem with a lot of guys, they can't be real with women. They got to they gotta beat around the bush, walk on eggshells, lie, and try to be their friends and all that other stuff. I don't believe in it. I don't believe men and women can be friends. I, I tell the women all the time, I can't be your friend if I'm attracted to you. It's not mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. Now, what do you what do you, what do you tell a guy when um, a girl tells him for us to have sex? I want to be in a relationship. I tell her goodbye. No matter of fact, I not only tell her goodbye, I tell her this. I I, I respect what you're saying. That, that, Tony, let me ask you a question. Do you grill? I'm not even in Florida, but you grill, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And when you grill, what do you do to the meat before you put it on the grill? I season it and marinate it. Yeah, you yeah. marinate the meat, yeah. right? So what I call this is putting a candle in the window. My thing is, if you want a relationship, look, I'm not the guy. But guess what? I'm going to light that candle and put it in the window. When you want to laugh, when you want to blush, you want to think, when you want to react, when you want to have a good time, call me. But other than that, take care. And I'm done. I'm moving on to the next one or the next town because I'm not going to try to be what she wants me to be in order to get something that I know she would give me freely when she realizes I'm a man, brother. Mm -hmm. But now also, it, I think if a woman says that to you, she really doesn't want a relationship. She, she wants control. Well, yeah, but see, the thing that a lot of guys don't know, see, single women sometimes wear wedding rings, Tony, 
Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. a single woman will put on a wedding ring and go to the club because she might want a one night stand. So she's got to kind of separate mm -hmm. the guys that want long term commitment from the guys that want one night stands. And some guys will look at. See, I'm always like this. I'll give a woman. Tell me no twice, because I think the first no is going to be the test. You know, you can say you want a relationship, but I can also tell you I can't give you one. Now, what are we going to do? Now we're going to move forward or we're not. But the thing is, I'm going to let you know because like you said, control. See, a lot of these guys, and it goes back to, we were talking about the guys saying all that stuff to the women. They are options. So an option or grass eating lion accepts the crumbs of, I don't know the crumb of, I'll think about it. The crumb of, I'll get back to you later. And I don't know. And I'm not sure. And they accept those things because they make it about sex. And when you make it about sex with an emotional woman, she's not just going to give you sex because you want it. She's saying, where do I get out of this? Yeah, you get sex, but I don't get any emotions out of this. So you know what? I'll keep pushing the crumbs off the table and, and give you the crumbs while I sleep with the Tony Brunos of the world. That's mm -hmm. an a-hole. That's a jerk. That's conceited. That's selfish. And, and, and that's the key to all this, brother. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good the way you put that with the crumbs. That's really that's, good. That's, that's true, man. Yeah, I've, I've never heard it put like that. <laughs> um, also, now, what do you say to, let's say, a guy that wants to get into a relationship? It goes back to what I always say. If you want a relationship before you walk out that door, you must have a standard of principles. OK, you see what guys don't understand. I always tell guys there are three laws that they must live by what I call outside in the real world. The law of the land. You kill somebody, you're going to jail. The law of the street. If you're going 50 in a 20 mile an hour zone and you get caught. OK, you see what happens. And then there's the law of the job. Do what you're supposed to do. Go to work and do all those things. But outside of that, you can create the world how you see it. So based off of how you see relationships, what is what is a woman to me that I want to date? What is a woman to me that I want to be in a relationship with? What is a woman to me that I want to live with? And these are things that men have to know out of the gate, because when you make that transition from seeing each other to relationships, you got to see most guys will do this. We got to have a powwow. We got to talk because if, if if you want a relationship with me, just like a job, this is the criteria. This is the standard. And this is what I expect of you. And just like a job, either you're going to fulfill what we want you to do or you're not and you're gone. I, I'm not going to beg you to, to, to stop hanging out with other guys. Because you're starting to become a representation of me. And if you want to have guy friends, Tony, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight you. We're just going to fall back to booty call. And I, I, I never want to try to change a woman. But I have the standard because, Tony, I am the standard. Yeah, I noticed that a lot with women, women with guy friends. And I'll never understand how, how there can be you know, you can be a woman can be in a relationship and then go out with her guy friends. I don't think that a man that, <laughs> that that's a that's an example of a grass eating lion. <laughs> How does that? I can't even I can't even imagine. I, I can't even imagine a woman saying, yeah, OK, Steve, well, I'm going to hang out with Tony. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that is, yeah. I guess it's in the water or in the grass, man. I, I don't know, man. I don't I can't even imagine that, brother. Yeah. OK, well. <laughs> you're you're a dating coach and you know yes. realistically i mean you're a life coach what yes. is your number one i guess coaching specific topic that you deal with i always with, try what, to, what does a man reach out to you for the they most? reach out to oh for what several things uh oh they reach as sex women talking texting cooking uh flirting everything under the sun uh, I always try to get guys to begin to go down that road by themselves to understand that what I want you to do is start to learn your name and your authenticity and stand on that. And when you stand on that, you're going to build not high tolerance, not low tolerance, but no tolerance. That means 
you're not going to put up with anything or anybody and you're going to be willing to walk away and say no because you because your name is something you need to stand by die for and own like it's like it's air out there so that's the first thing i got to teach them to take all the wiring of making excuses blaming women blaming life blaming the trees the birds the flowers the grass i mean all that blame we take all mommy out of them yank all those cords out of them clean them up and start them to build and cultivate their rules based on how they see the world, not how I see it. Because I, oh, Tony, this is why I tell them, don't believe me. Don't believe anything I say. When I'm on YouTube, I tell them all the time, Tony, don't believe me because you don't know me. But I, what I tell you is take the information and, and see it for yourself. Take what I'm giving you, decode it into your name and encode it and upload it into who you are. But don't believe me because you don't know me. I'm just someone you watch on video. But I mean, I've got the, the background to show you I know what I'm talking about, but mm -hmm. I want you to learn how to think for yourself and not look at me as a cult leader to tell you what to think. Now in the past, there's been one thing you've said in the past couple topics we talked about, and it was always right near the end. And I think this is an issue you say, you have to walk away. Yes. I don't think a lot of men are able to walk away. Is it because they don't have any options? What is the reason? Well, it's a, it's a lack of self. They, it's not the fact of having options. It's the fact of, again, they're not special enough for me to care enough about them to, mm -hmm. to put my emotions into them. And what happens is a lot of young men who don't have the foundation of self, they get emotionally attached with the woman. They get attached to the body, the curves, and all the things that they mm -hmm. see on the outside, but they never challenge the woman to say, what are you bringing to the table? Well, okay, you look good, but guess what? She looks good too, and, and mm -hmm. she looks good. She look, so there's nothing different between you, and I can find another you and a younger version or a older version. So what do you bring to my table in my world that separates you from all the other women, because I can't base you off of your, your looks because your character, because my interest is me to do this. I, your character must match your looks. Your, and and I, that's the only way you get my time. So these guys, they become attached, Tony, because they don't stand on anything. They're always, you're so busy being told what to say, Tony. They're so busy complaining about women and worrying about women that when they get around a woman, they don't know what to do. Because if all I'm doing is complaining about women, how am I teaching you how to navigate your compass? Because your name, Tony, is your compass that guides you through that storm. But if you don't have a compass, you're going to fall in love and, and feel good about it. You, you see what I'm saying, brother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, everybody has this guy, this I call him the relationship guy who has to be in a relationship. As soon as he gets out of one, he gets right back into one. Right. Now, I have a few few buddies I know that I call them. They're the relationship guys. Cannot be alone. Can't do it. What right. do you say to a guy like that? Now, I've seen some of these guys, and I know that the woman is there just so they can say they have a woman. That's the problem. See, and it goes back to – see, see, Tony, I, this is how deep I get. I always tell guys – you came into this world by yourself. When your mom met your dad and you were conceived, you didn't have Facebook, Instagram, a Twitter account or anything like that to get to the egg, right? You took the journey mm -hmm. to reach the egg on your own. You were in competition with millions of your brothers and sisters, but you reached the egg because you had passion, drive, and discipline. It's just something happened along the way where you forgot who you are and you lost yourself in the, in the muck of the world somewhere. And what these guys don't understand is a man, being a man is a lonely journey. I didn't say being alone, Tony. I said lonely because you've mm -hmm. got to walk this road by yourself to learn you. And I, a woman cannot define me. I can, and that's the problem. These guys define themselves, like you said, Tony, by the woman. They think a woman is the definition of a man, 
But again, Tony, women don't play a role in manhood. They never will. They are just a person, unless they get the man's name, that's something different. But even if you're having the man's name and she disrespects the name, then you're just rewarding bad behavior because you don't, you can't be alone because you don't know how it works, man. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with a man that's gone through, regardless of how he got the trauma? Like, yes, because there's a demographic and I'm not sure what it is of men committing suicide. Yes. So how do you deal with a guy who's not being able to get, I think you call it a heart punch. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm one again, of those yes. guys to where, yeah, yeah, where my brother is like, you know, he'll be, yeah. you know, if, if yes. me and have an issue, or he has an issue with me, boom, he just hits me hard. I can take yes. it. I'm used to it. That's how yes. we grew up. Yes. But how yes. do you deal with a guy that can't handle that, that heart punch, that quick, hard shot that's going to snap him out of it? I kind of do a boiling frog, Tony. I try to tell them that we've got to stop. You, we, I don't want you to go with the current. What we got to do is begin a process. Again, it's a process because, it, you know, like I said, the PUAs back in the day, it's not a magical pill. You can't be a doctor in a day. This is going to be a process of turning your ship around and going against the current because the current is, is life knocking you down and the problems that you have. And you must face your problems. You must go towards the bullets or go towards the cave because it, you don't lose. You learn from those things. And what I tell them is it's OK to feel look, I tell, I tell guys all the time, if you want to cry and you want to feel bad and you want look, go drive in the middle of nowhere, stop the car and cry your heart out, cry your heart out. But when you get done wiping your tears, you better snap yourself up and you better hold your name as if it's a lifeline. And that's why I tell them it's OK to hurt because right now you don't have a sense of self. But what we got to do is we're going to slowly build that. But don't trust me. Trust the process and trust yourself. I'm going to be here for the process, Tony, but I am not the process. That's the thing. I don't want you to don't rely on me. I want you to learn how to rely on yourself to be able to solve these issues, my brother. Mm -hmm. So you're not calling him a simp in the chat. You're not calling him a, you no, know, I, no. I've seen that so much where a, a man will ask a sincere question and gets just attacked. I don't care if it's on Facebook or Twitter or in a, in a podcast. Right. And to me, not every man can handle that. And right. I feel for those guys because when a guy actually reaches out, when a man gets it in himself to reach out to a group yes. of guys and then yes. gets knocked down, to me, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. See, the, the, the individual must begin the process of it's none of my business. People are allowed to say whatever they want to say about you. People are allowed to say whatever they feel about you, but it's the stories that you believe that have an impact on your personal and self image. And that's the problem. We got to get these young boys and even those that are afraid to speak up for themselves to not worry about what people think about you because people are allowed. We, I, Tony, we can't change every guy to think like men. We can't do that. But mm -hmm. it goes back to the high school mentality. It's a crab in a bucket. A lot of people, okay, let's say I'm coming to you, Tony, and I've got a problem, but I'm worried about everybody going to say about me. And someone says something bad about me, that guy wants the answer too. He just doesn't want to get ridiculed. You know, it's, it's, the, it's a group mentality thing that these young men are in where, you know what, if you need help, go and seek that person behind the scenes. You can ask questions. See, what I do in my room, is I let people ask questions. One thing I won't tolerate is disrespect. Come in here to listen. Come in here to learn. Don't talk about other things. Don't break up other things. And don't disrespect anybody in the class and because you'll get kicked out. Because I want people to feel like, you know what? You can come here. You can relax and know you're not going to be judged. Now, Tony, like you said, I'm not going to, I'm going to be hard on you, but it's going to be love in that. Hey, I'm not going to make you look bad or look dumb. It's just I'm going to show you some things that make, make you feel that way, but that's not going to be my intention. 
Well, I've noticed, I noticed like Donovan Sharp in the chat when somebody had said something and they pile on and Donovan would say, Hey, this guy's asking a question, lay off him. You know, he yes. had the ball yes. to jump in there and say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm asking yeah. for some information. So that's right. the way that a man, that's the way that a man is reaching out you know some yeah. he might be somewhere where there's nobody around he could be up in montana in a cabin somewhere or yeah. you know but he's still reaching out so i think right. us as men we need to understand that everybody's situation is different you know yes. so yes. so how do how do you know I'm, I'm glad you said that too but again some men can take it some men need a little more i don't want to right. say coddling but they need a different approach well, that's where, see, that's where being an authentic man and be able to lead people as a leader, you got to know that you're dealing with several different personalities. Every, just like I try to tell guys, they're all women are different, but they believe they're the same, but all guys are different as well. So you've got to know yourself and see, I've been doing this long enough to know, okay, I know how much of a punch I should give the guy versus putting a pat on the back and my arm around his shoulder. I know when to yank them or when to say it's OK. I, I understand where you're coming from because I can tell the pain that they have through the things that they're saying. So I, I, I everybody's treated different because, again, I, I don't want everybody to be I don't I don't want to build a cult, man. I want everybody to be individual thinkers, man. Well, Steve, I think you're 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 definitely been on the right track, and I think anybody that does coaching you with you is definitely going to get what they, what they need for sure. I can see that you do have a, I don't want to say a different approach, but I think you have a very experienced approach to yeah. dealing with men's issues and relationships, but you do have a definite, you know, thing on basically holding the man accountable and be a man. Yes. That's number one. Yeah. Um, let's talk about 21 real quick. Um, you you have spoke at, I believe, the Patriarch Convention and yes. Poland Convention, correct? Yes. Yes. What was your yes, experience there? Man, what was your experience? the first, the, 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 the best experience was being around men. Oh, man, the, it, it, it's, it's being around individual men that come from all parts of the world that come together as a whole. I think that was the best part. But not only that, it was uh, Anthony. The a, I always call him A one man. Just just how he set everything up. But also the the people, the the people who went to the uh, conventions. I it, it was it, it's so many combinations because these young men are saying, you know what, I want to learn. And I'm going to invest in me to learn and I'm going to be around men and I'm going to have an opportunity to rub elbows, talk to, pull them aside and tell them my story. And it's just it's so many things. It's 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 the combination of men. It's like a perfect storm combination of men over here. A one and how he set everything up. Hey, and that goes with your brother, too. But I, I, man, mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of tell I always tell George, I wish I was the, the third Bruno, because I mean, George is the joy. I mean, I love George. George is my boy, man. But George and, and he's part of the A1 experience because how he does the interviews, how how he makes people feel during the interviews. And it's also the people that go there that we get to rub elbows with and talk to and be able just to pull them aside and give them more one on one face to face conversations and coaching. Yeah, I noticed at a cocktail party and you're obviously every time I've seen you there, there was just men around you constantly. There was one cocktail yeah. party where there were, you were surrounded like seven different seven different guys. And I believe you were doing a demonstration. I'm not yeah, sure who with the Tony's was. sister. Okay, it was uh, okay. it was Anthony's sister. Okay, Anthony's sister. All right. Yeah, yep, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So we, you, we were doing approach. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's what it was. No, that's good. Yeah. That's what it was. But I did notice a lot of guys that were always. Anytime you were free, you had a group of guys around you, yeah, which was yeah. great. Yeah, we, I love it. But that yeah. to me is the different experience of twenty one. So oh, you yeah, can a, have yeah. lunch with you can have lunch with Steve the Dean. You know. Oh, yeah, so that's absolutely. the beauty of that convention. And everybody so, else that's there. Do you have yeah, anything? Every, yeah. 
I'm sorry. What do you have? I don't want to, I don't want you to give it away, but what do you have planned? Do you have something planned special for, for this upcoming convention? Yeah, I'm not going to bring the, yeah, I'm not going to bring the hammer this time, but yeah, I'm, okay. <laughs> I've got an idea where I want to okay. go with what I want to say. And, uh, and I got an idea for if we get there a chance to do the workshops, I know it definitely what I'm going to do in the workshops as well. So I got Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Steve, how can everybody find you? Give me all your platforms. Hey, just go to the man mindset.com. Uh, oh, well, okay. On Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, the man mindset.com. Um, but I just tell all the guys, go to the man mindset.com, go in with the thought process of, you know what? I don't, don't trust me. Don't believe me on the front page. We have nothing but receipts of women that talk to my clients. I, I, I leave it all there so they can see it, but we have a free starter oh, kit good. and a hey, Tony. We also have a dating chat line with women on there right now. I'm a, I bring women to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm the, I got, oh, wow. you go to the date chat. Like there are women there right now. So that's why I try to separate myself, but yeah, just go to the man mindset.com. And if you have any questions, Get at me at the man mindset at gmail.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Steve, I really appreciate your time and <laughs> thanks for coming on and talking. There, I think a lot of men are going to get some great info from this talk. And of course, yeah. guys, reach out to Steve. He's a professional. He's been doing it a long time. So reach out to him. Steve, and, I and appreciate I'll, your time. And one Go thing ahead. I want to say, guys. Let me tell you about Tony Bruno. This man, hey, look, he he all chill right now. You know, great interview and all this other stuff. But the Bruno boys, man, if you get the chance to hang out with the Bruno boys, Tony or George, dude, they about the game, man. <laughs> hey, Tony, you bad, man. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Steve, I appreciate that, Steve. That's a great Thank shout you. out. I really do. Yeah, much that. love to you, man. I, I love appreciate you. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. So thanks Thank for coming. Thank you so on. much. Thank you, man. All right. You have a good day. Thanks. All right. You too. Take care, man. Thank you.